the Lord. They're going to sing this one if they know. I don't know if they know or not, but I was going to sing this one. My, my voice is a little scratchy, so I'm going to let them help me. Uh, I don't think I'm going to sing one without that. some of them children's stories and just read through there. But I'm glad I'm one of his children and read through there and see something in there. God still use them to help us. And I hope that's what he'll do here tonight. Mark chapter number five. For time's sake, begin reading in verse 25. We'll read about eight or nine verses here and just let the Bible preach the message. Amen. It does far better me anyway. Mark chapter five, verse 25. The Bible said in a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Yes. When she had heard of Jesus, thank yes. God for that, yes. came in the yes. press behind and touched his garment, for she said, If I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Yes. Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee and sayest, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing, but the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Yeah. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and behold of thy plague. Amen. Father, we thank you and praise you once again for who and all that you are. Lord, I ask you to help us here for the next few minutes. Lord, speak to us and through us. Lord, use us in a way to be pleasing unto yourself. And we'll praise you for it. In Christ's name, amen, amen. Mm -hmm. We've already said a very familiar story. There's nobody in the building tonight was surprised. Said, Boy, I never heard that. I didn't know it was in the Bible. It's very familiar. But I'm afraid we've become all too knowing in these things. And we've yeah. got it figured out. And Man, I know this verse. I know that verse. And maybe maybe there's been times I felt like I was a little bit of a know-it-all. And I had it all figured out. And, and that's when it gets worse on me when I think I know it, when I think I've got it figured out. Because it's then it's my way instead of his way. And, and then I get my in trouble. Y'all probably never been there, but pray for me. I get there all the time. But but as, as we've, we've, like I said, we've heard about this story. We've read, we've read it. And we've heard it taught and preached from. But I, I want to 
I'll look at it in a life application form for a few minutes. I, I'm a slow learner myself. I don't know a whole lot and don't claim to be, but I'm glad that I know him more and more than I'm glad he knows me. But as I've studied through the Word of God, as I begin to look at it, there's a couple of things that I look and it helps me in my learning. First and foremost, I want to know what does it say? What exactly does it say? Who is it talking to and what in the world does it have to do with me? How can I apply this to my life and be what God wants me to be or help me through what I'm facing or going through? But as I looked at this thing in a life application, we know that she's had this issue for 12 years. That in itself is bad enough. That's bad enough. If I, get a, if I get a migraine or get some kind of sickness and it hangs around for a few minutes or a few hours, man, I'm dying. I'll just be honest with you. Just take me on out. But, but this lady for 12 long years has suffered with this thing and, and she's battled it and, and she's done all that she can do with it. No, no doubt when something hangs around that long, it starts taking a toll on you. Yes. So she's got the she's got the physical pain, she's got the anguish, she's got the physical problems, if you will, the mental despair and agony and the things she's going through. It's starting to take a tear, it's wear and tear on her after this time. I'm looking from her angle. Yes. But so we see the, the physical and the mental problems that she's wrestling with day in and day out. No peace, no rest. There's never a time that it goes away. It's constantly there. And I think, boy, what a state to be in. The thing is, this might have been her worst condition, but it's not her own. She's not just facing the issue of the blood. She's got her everyday life. Yeah. Everyday life can be as big a problem as a sickness sometimes. There can be more issues than just yeah. one single day or one yeah. few minutes. So, I mean, she's still trying to live with and through this thing. Yeah. And, and we'll draw, draw an illustration. We'll get to something in a minute. But, but she's more. dealing with the everyday struggles of life, just trying to live the best she can. But yeah. notice in verse 26. Notice how it starts out. And had suffered many things. So this is not her only problem. She's suffering. She's struggling. She's trying her best to get through. And, and she's yeah. suffered many things. We see the sadness, the pain, the discouragement. That Notice many physicians. She's not. It's bad enough you've got to go to one doctor. It's bad enough you've got to take one medication. But many physicians. Yeah. She's yeah. going from doctor to doctor to doctor. This lady's trying to get help. Have you ever been? medicine right here. This thing, this is going to heal you. Right. It's going to take care of all your problems. This thing's going to help you sleep at night. And if it does, you sleep too long. Then you got to take this one to help you wake <laughs> up in the morning. And then you got to do this. And you gotta, I'm not beating up on doctors. I'm just telling you the reality of some things yeah. this woman could have faced and some things that you and I faced. We're going to run this test and we're going to do this scan. It's going to tell us this. And man, then they come back and tell you, oh, do you know you had this, this, and this too? Wait a minute, we're dealing with this problem. I can't handle but one problem at a time. Most of the time, I can't handle it. Well, I think if we do this procedure right here, then it's going to take care of it. 
They don't tell you all the side effects of the procedure, the medicine for the procedure and everything else. But either way, she's done all that she can. She, she's been there. She's been through all the pain. She just wants it to go away. And now we've come to a point where she's spent all that she's had. She's gave her all. She's trying her best. But notice she's nothing the better. But rather worse. Have you ever noticed when you try your hardest? It gets worse. Have you ever just made up your mind that just like we heard this morning, redeeming the time, man, I'm going to surrender to God. I'm going to serve God more than I ever have. I'm going to do more for Him. The harder you try, the harder it gets. Every time you think, man, I've crossed that threshold. I'm through this valley. I can see the top of the mountain from where I am. It gets deeper and darker. She's trying her best. This thing's just not going to go away. It's not going to move away from her. It's, it's not going to. It's not going to go. And as I sit in my study night and I read these scriptures and I read these verses, God just like He shined a light on them. And I began to think about many of us in this building, even here tonight. And I began to think about people I work with and people in my family. Man, they really want to do good. They really want to try hard. They really want to get through it. But man, the harder they try, the worse it gets. We've tried our best. Yes. But the reality is our best isn't good enough. Right. We're in worse shape than we've ever been in. Right. If we'll be honest about it. Mm-hmm. We get this sense that, that maybe this is the last time or it's beginning to get better then it turns out worse. Right. We talk to others and we try to get their thoughts and their opinions on the matter but we can't shake it. It begins to feel like it's a lost cause. We're out of time. We're out of money. We begin to run out of hope. We're out of options. We're about ready to give up. You ever been there? Good that I can preach to you. I'm going to preach you a simple thought. I'm drawing you a big illustration for a short, simple message. I want to preach a short, simple message tonight on a thought of when all else fails. When all else fails, when nothing else works, Jesus still works. Amen. Notice verse number 27. When she here she's got none the better and everything's getting worse, verses 25 and 26. But the Bible says when she heard of Jesus. Mm-hmm. You remember the first time you ever heard of Jesus? I'd heard about him. But I remember the first time I ever heard from him. Yes. I remember the first time he ever spoke to me. I remember when he started dealing with me. He started drawing me. He showed his love, his grace, and his mercy, and his long-suffering toward me, and all those things, and how wonderful it was. But when she had heard of Jesus, she realized these other doctors were just doctors, and thank God for them. But she realized there was a great physician. There was the Lord God, Jehovah, the one that took nothing and made everything, the one that picks up the broken pieces, the ones that heals broken Broken hearts and broken bodies. The one that takes care of it all. When she heard of Jesus. When she heard of Jesus. I love that phrase. When she heard of Jesus. She didn't get mad at the people telling her. She didn't turn them away. She didn't try to seek the dogs on them. She didn't try to change the subject. She didn't do any of those things. When she heard of Jesus. She came in the press behind and. She touched his garment. Yes. And she touched his garment. I look at that. Here she came in the press from behind. And she, she comes in this thing. She's riding through. There, there's a press there. There's a multitude. There's a crowd there. Have you ever realized when you try to get to Jesus, when you try to get there, there's always something hindering. There's always something between you and Him. There's always something trying to hold you back or turn you away or get you to go to this side or to that side. But when she pressed straight forward to where He was and she rushed up and she grabbed the hold of God. Yes. Preach it. She fought through everything Mm -hmm. and everyone else just to get a hold of God. Isn't it something being able to get a hold of God? It's something. He's made a main line for you and I where we can get right directly to him. We don't have to go through this but you, hey, you can come to me tonight or Brother Ross tonight and, and you can confess your sin if that's what you want to do and, and you can ask us to help you pray for things but we're just going to pray to him just like you would. I'm glad I don't need an operator. I'm glad I don't need anything else. I'm glad I can come boldly before the throne of grace tonight and I can reach out and grab the Savior and I'm glad he's and he's more than able to do what I need. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. 
Many times when we get to our lowest point, we seem to forget about Jesus. And I hope this doctor can help. I hope this I hope this surgery will take care of it. I hope that can do it. I hope the other can do it. And we try to go our own way. So many people, I don't know how many I've talked to, Brother Ross, I've watched them shed tears. And they say, boy, I need this Jesus. I need salvation. But I'd have to quit this. But I'd have to give up that. But I'd have to leave this. But I'd have to. And they start putting all this stuff between them and God. Amen. Put all that stuff aside. Don't worry about it. Just get to where he's at. Right. Yeah. He'll take care of the rest. Amen. Amen. Jesus is more than sufficient. He's more than enough. He's far better than whatever that is. The devil's hanging out in front of you. Don't worry about what he's offering. Just take Jesus at his word. Yeah. They try to do it their own way. Yeah. So we've got that press between us. We've got that big crowd of issues. We've got that multitude of trouble. Yes. But if we can just reach out and get a hold of him, everything will be all right. If you can ever just reach out, see, it wasn't just anything or anybody she was touching. This woman got a hold of God. Amen. You understand that, don't you? In the beginning, the word, word with God, and the word was God. That word took on a mortal flesh and, and would dwell among us. Yeah. She touched God. Amen. Could you imagine that? I am so envious of John the Beloved. How he just walked up and laid his hand in the bosom of our Savior. Could you imagine that, Miss Christie? When your world and your life's falling apart and you're tired and you're weary, just walk up and just lay your head down there in his bosom. This lady went through the crowd. She said, I don't care what's in my way. I don't care how dirty or how filthy it is. I'm more filthy and wretched than this old ground and everything that's around me. I'm going to get a hold of God. Amen. See, we're too easily hindered. Bless you, Lord. Yeah. Things hinder our faith. They Bless hinder him, our Lord. walk. They hinder our lives. Bless him, Jesus. And we start making excuses in reality. Bless him, Lord. And we try to justify ourselves for our service, for our life thereof. This lady said, I'm not dying in the shape that I'm in. I, Miss Christie, I have no idea what this lady died with, but I guarantee you it had nothing to do with her blood. Amen. Because Jesus took care of that. That's right. That's right. When he does it, he does it once right. and for all. Well, yeah. yes. Bless him, Lord. Verse number 28. The Bible said, For she said, If I may, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. She said, If I can just touch his clothes, if I can just get a hold of him. I don't know, and I'm going to say this tonight. I don't know how many prayers this woman might have prayed. I don't know. She might not ever heard anything about Jesus. She might not ever been to church in her life. She might have been a faithful church member. I don't know. But I, even lost people pray when the world when things get bad enough. I talk to people all the time, living wicked, wretched, rotten, and, and Jesus loves and will save them too. They say, well, I was praying for you while you was in the hospital. And I'm glad that people say that. And I'm not being mean or ugly. But if you can't get a prayer through for yourself, you're not doing a whole lot of good praying for me. That's right, brother. That's right, brother. I was lost as a ball on high waves, and a lot of times I still pray because that, that's what you do that people Bless talk. Him, Lord. Just pray about it. Just pray about it. Bless well, him, if you Lord. don't know God or know how to get a hold of God or whatever, I was there was an article popped up on my phone the other day. This young lady, some superstar, supposedly singer or something. I don't know. I read the first few minutes of it and I was over it. Bless but him, she was in a plane, and then there was turbulence, and they Bless thought him, it was going to crash. And, and she him, started Lord. praying to God. She said, I don't know which God I was praying to. I was just asking one up to help me and my dog. Boy, how sad. Yeah. And go die in that shape. I said, Lord. I don't know how many times, though, this woman in over a 12 year time period might have prayed. I don't know how many prayers she'd send up. God, would you help me? God, would you heal me? God, would you touch the doctors? God, would you give them wisdom? Bless God, him, would Lord. you give knowledge? God, would you just let me lay down and sleep tonight? I'm hurting so bad. God, would you just help me? Have you ever been there? Yeah. But obviously, she couldn't get past everything Bless else him, to get a hold of. In other words, I'm afraid many times our prayer is not a prayer of faith. What faith this woman had. What faith, what a statement that was. She didn't say if Jesus would speak, if Jesus would touch, if he did it. She said if I could just get a hold of him and take care of my problem. That thing that I've wrestled with for 12 long years, that thing that's kept me defeated and discouraged, and, and that thing that's kept me in, took everything that I have. That sounds like the devil to me. That thing that's took it all, it'll give me victory if I can just get a hold of God. What faith? What faith? 
many times I'm afraid that we I pray not right. because of faith, but rather because of pain or fear, Jesus. sadness or sorrow I or suffering. Lord. Just like I said earlier, we I pray Jesus. because that's what we do is we, we pray. Thank you, Lord. But a lot of times we pray and we don't get better. As we pray, many times I'm afraid we're filled with Help doubt, thinking about the problem, rather than the problem solver. Yes. When we pray, a lot of times, I mean, we can be honest about it tonight. That's only what we can we get honest about things. Right. When we pray, a lot of times, are we praying just because we're Baptists, just because, you know, we ought to pray, and just because, are we truly praying because we believe God's hearing and God's moving and God's doing? Is that why we're praying? Or are we just praying because we have a burden? Are we just praying because we have a care? This woman was to the point. She said, if I can just touch him, it's going to take care of this problem. Yeah, amen. She had the faith to believe. We come before God with real issues or a real need a lot of times. But I'm afraid we don't trust Him with it because we don't leave it with Him. Preacher, what do you mean by that? Well, you've heard it and you've done it just like I have. We brought it to the altar broken and needing help. And we, and we laid it here on the altar before God. But you know what we did right before we left? We picked it back up. That's right. I better take this back home with me so I'll have something to be discouraged about this week. So I have some, Tomorrow's Monday. I need to worry all night Sunday night and not sleep because of this thing. Why don't we just trust God and say, God, here it is. God, take care of it. I've wrestled with it. It's beat me up and it's held me down long enough. God, if you can't do it, it can't be done. Well, I'm trusting God and I'm depending on God. But I won't give him this or give him that. If he can save our soul and make us a home in heaven, if he can supply our sin payment, surely to goodness he can take care of everything else, yeah. can he? Yeah, Lord. But notice her faith. If I can just touch her. My what faith, after 12 long years of failed procedures and taking everything she had, she could still trust God. Yeah. I'm about to shout. <laughs> And after all the failures and the mistakes and the things that I've done and the headaches and heartaches and everything that I've been through, I'm glad there's still a God in heaven tonight. And I'm glad I can still trust Him. I'm glad I can still depend on Him. When all else fails, when everything else changes, I'm glad He's still the same. Amen. Amen. I'm glad He's still the same. I'm glad He's not hiding from Him. Right. I've seen people in the past and they see you, but when you see that they don't want to talk to you, they don't want to be around you. And they go over here and they hide and they move over there. There's never been a time that I've called Jesus and he's hit decline on his phone. There's never been a time that I've called out him in need and had to tell him who I was or what my need was. There's never been a time when he said, hey, I just can't help you. I just can't do for you. I can't meet that need. He said, I'm able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think, honey. Just bring it to me and I'll take care of it. Amen. That's the kind of God that we serve. She prayed with a purpose. And a faith in a particular person. Mm -hmm. In verse 29, we begin to see results. Yeah. When your prayer gets serious and it's truly in faith, yeah. it makes a difference. The effectual Amen. fervent prayer of a righteous man Amen. still availeth much. Amen. Verse number 29, watch this. And straightway. <laughs> and straightway, the fountain yeah. of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that blood. Yeah, straightway, that means immediately. <laughs> immediately. <laughs> Aren't you, glad, aren't you glad it's not a 12-step process with God? Everybody, they made salvation that hard. This one says, boy, if you'll do this, and you'll do that, and you'll do the other. Man, if you'll, if you'll believe, if you'll repent, if you'll pray, if you'll get baptized, if you'll get joined the church, if you'll give a million dollars, if you'll change your clothes, if you'll change it. Man, they just made a 40 million step process and still don't know if we're going to heaven. I'm glad whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm glad when you get a hold of God, it makes an eternal, everlasting difference. Amen. And I remember I first got saved, and there's people coming up to me, giving me this manual, tell me how to do this, tell me how to do that, tell me how to do everything else. I said, well, God come to where I was, and he brought me out of there, and he started changing me from inside out, and he gets the inside fixed, honey, and he'll take care of the outside. Amen. Praise God. Preach it. But I'm afraid we've got such a pharisaical crowd today. Bless him, Lord. Well, the outside looks nice. They dress real pretty and real sweet, got the fanciest clothes, and they tote the right Bible. Boy, I wonder what that heart looks like. 
wonder how wicked and how dark that it is. Where you That's where I just throw that in. We you notice straightway immediately the blood was dried up. Yeah. We see the peace that comes, the relief that comes. Yeah. Notice, what, notice what she said. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body and that she was healed of that plague. Aren't you glad? And people talk about feelings all the time. Feelings are of the flesh. Yeah. There's times that I don't feel good. There's times that I don't feel safe. There's Thank times you, that I don't feel loved. Thank you, Lord. So you can't go by feelings. And this other crowd says, just follow your heart. <laughs> Time out! It's deceitful and wicked above all things and you can know it. You better be careful what you follow. Amen. So we can't trust our heart and we can't trust feelings. Preacher, what can we trust? I'm glad you asked. We can trust facts. Amen. We can trust an absolute unchanging fact. Yeah. And I've got news for you. God give yeah. every man a measure of faith. And if you put your faith in facts, it will bring about feelings. Amen. It will make a difference. Yeah. Praise God. But she felt. Well, I'm glad that night when God came to where I was and he dealt with me and he drawed me to him. And I didn't know him or know anything about him. But he was standing there talking to me like face to face like a friend, like he knew me. Why? Because he did know me. And he loved me even though I was wicked, wretched, and rotten. And he called me by name. And when I called out on his name, I felt that plague, that old life, that old man, that old sin was gone. And I'd been made anew in Christ Jesus. Amen. Talk to people and they say, I've prayed a prayer with it. Work. Nothing ever Bless happened. Well, you didn't put faith in it. You didn't trust in it. Preacher, how could you say that? Because of any man being Christ, he's a new creature. Yes. Behold, old things have passed away and all things become new. But thank God for the next verse. And it said, and all things are of God. Amen. See, it's not about me. I've been bought with a price. I'm no longer my own. Yes. I talk to people all the time, Brother Gary, say, boy, I wish I could just get what I deserve. I don't. I don't want, want what I deserve. I deserve to be in hell with my back broken. Oh, but oh, what a Savior's mind that came to where I was. So we see that it was dried up immediately. We see the peace and the relief, if you will, that comes when you truly get a hold of God. Yeah. Many times we pray and it doesn't seem like it leaves the room or like it goes anywhere, like it makes a That's difference. Cool. But boy, there's been a few times, Brother Ross, when I've got down on my unfit knees and yeah. upon my face and, and I've cried out to God and I knew without a shadow of a doubt that i would got a hold of something yeah. and I knew without a shadow of a doubt that I was in the throne room with my Father yeah. and He was hearing every word that I had to say and He was moving even when I spoke. Why? Because I put my faith and trust in Him and I said nothing's going to happen Unless I get a hold of God. Thank you, Lord. I'm glad he's reachable, aren't you? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm glad he's within reach. Praise yeah. your holy name. He don't run. He don't hide. Yeah. He desires a fellowship with you. Yeah. Help him, Lord. It was, it was Adam and Eve that broke fellowship in the garden. It wasn't God. God desired to walk with them and to talk with them and had fellowship. Jesus, when he came into his earthly ministry, what was the first thing that he done? He went and found him some friends. Yeah. Amen. They failed and forsook him. He didn't ever leave another thing. Right. He it. never told Peter, after, hey, after you cuss and you have your Baptist cussing fit and you go out and out, you got to quit and you got to go. No, just the opposite. Greater love is no man known than this. Go call my disciples and Peter. I want you to know, even though he's failed, that I still love him, that I still got a place for him, I still got a plan for him. He's still mine. Amen. He's still mine. Amen. The preacher, I don't feel worthy, neither do I. But I'm glad he was willing. Right. I've never been worthy. Right. It's always been my grace. It's always been an unmerited favor that God yeah. showed. I'm glad that there's been times that we've took those petitions well, through to the throne room. And Almighty God's given us sweet assurance and sweet peace. Amen. Sweet joy and sweet victory. Thank you. And we can understand way down deep that God's still in control even in the midst of our situation. Verse number 30. Watch this. I said short and sweet. I'm trying to quit lying, especially behind the pulpit. Verse number 30. The Bible said, And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out, turned him about into the press and said, Who touched my clothes? He wasn't asking because he didn't know. There's never been a question in all of eternity from Genesis to Revelation before, during, or after that God didn't know the answer.
sir. When he said, Adam, Adam, where art thou, Adam? He didn't need Adam to tell him. He wanted Adam to know that God knew where he was. Yes, yeah. God. That night when he came to me and put me old time conviction, never even asked if it was okay. He didn't ask me where I was. He showed me where I'd been. He showed me where I was headed. Yeah. But he showed me a path and a plan he had for me if I'd just accept it. Jesus knew that she had touched him. He felt virtue go out of her. That word virtue, it's got many wonderful meanings. I'm not going to give you all of them, but it speaks of power, strength, and ability. Yeah. Isn't it good to know when all your power's gone? When all your strength's gone? When all your ability's gone? When you give everything that you have, but God's still got virtue? Mm -hmm. He's still got more than what you need, and all you got to do is come for him and ask. You have not. Why? Because you ask not. Yes, pretty good, brother. It's because we don't have what we need. He's always got. His grace is sufficient, and weakness we made strong. Verse number thirty-one. And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest, Who touched me? I began to read that verse and I began to think about it when I first got saved trying to go around and tell people about being saved and born again. Some folks just don't understand what it means to get a hold of God. Some folks don't understand the things of God. Why? Because it's spiritually discerned. Without the spirit, you're none of him. So they don't understand what you're talking about. You say, I've been saved. I've been born again. I've been redeemed. I've been bought with the price. Amen. I'm no longer what I was. You're what? Say what? You went to church and you and you did something and you no. It's far more than that. <laughs> it was like you go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, why? Because I can't find nowhere to go Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Huh? Help me more. So you think you gotta go? No, but I sure need to. Yeah, yeah. I'm just bad. My wife tells me all the time, that's not nice. I said, I don't claim to be nice. <laughs> I've never said one time I was good, none are good. Right. Amen. We see that others just don't understand when we get when, when we get in touch with God. See, Lord. I'm glad God does. I've got rope down right here and I can barely read my chicken strats that I scribbled down earlier. There's a difference in calling on God and getting a hold of God. Yeah, preach you, Lord. Preacher, can you explain? I sure can. Hey, you can pick up your fancy cell phone right now. Mine's in the car. But you can pick up your cell phone right now if you got it on your side and click that thing open or hit the power button or whatever you want to do. And you can pick out whatever number you want to hit and click the little call symbol on that thing and it'll send and, and it'll ring or it'll go to a voicemail. Because you called on somebody or you called somebody don't mean you got a hold of them. Well, that's it, boy. I've talked to a lot of people, prayed a lot of prayers, but it didn't make a difference in their life. You said, well, you just, you just didn't get a hold of it. You haven't got to figure it out. So there's going to be a many in that day that's going to say, Lord, we've done this and we've done that and all these things. They call. They say, depart from me, you that work iniquity. And this crowd, this crowd said they fell from grace and they lost their salvation. That's not what Jesus said. I never knew you. That, that word never right there is in all of eternity from beginning to end, from Alpha to Omega, from the first to last. I never in all of eternity, in all of time, I never knew you. You never were saved. They called apparently, but they didn't get a hold of it. God upon him when he's near. God upon him when he may be found. Talked to a lot of people and seen them under conviction. They waited days and weeks and hours and months. I don't know how long I'll deal with somebody. But you're going to have to call while he's dealing and you ain't going. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Verse number 32. And he looked around about to see her that had done this. Yes. Aren't you glad when you called out on him he was seeking you? Yes. Why did he come? He's performed all these miracles. He raised the dead. He fed the multitudes. He done all those wonderful miracles. But that's not why he came. He said, I come to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. He was looking for her far before she ever was looking for him. You think about that. That void that was in your life all that time that you tried to fill with this and this and this and that and all those other things that you tried to put in his place. When you finally got there, realized that's him. That's what I need. And you reach out. I'm glad he was right there. Yes. And he supplied that need in every other yes. one. Amen. 
after that he came seeking me. Bless you, Lord. And I could get a hold of him in my time of need. Yeah. Verse 33, the Bible said, But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, yeah. Yeah. came and fell down before him, told him all the truth. Yeah. You remember that night? You remember that morning, that day, whenever it was, when you got a hold of God and there was a difference? Man, there was fear there. There was all sorts of emotions there. There was everything running about. And I didn't even understand what was going on. But I knew there was joy unspeakable and full of glory. I knew there was peace like I'd never felt before. That passed all understanding. And I fell down at His feet and began to worship somebody that I never even knew. Why? Because what He just done for me. Nobody else could do it. The doctors couldn't do it. The surgery couldn't do it. The medication couldn't do it. But the great physician took care of it all. Never took a dime. All it took was one visit just to get to where he was, reaching up and getting a hold of him. Aren't you glad for that? We see the testimony of the woman. That's all Christ wanted. The greatest message you'll ever share with us is simply your testimony. Paul's preached his for how long now? We're yeah. preaching out of it week after week after week. Yeah. There was this one time I was on the Damascus Road. I was going the wrong way, doing the wrong thing. But there was a great light shown down to where that I was. Is that not your testimony tonight? No matter how young you was, how old you was, there was a great life that revealed something unto you. And it was hard to kick against the pricks. And you cried out, Lord. I says, I just don't know enough Bible. Well, that's our own fault, honestly, but we'll not get into that message tonight. I'm trying to be nice. Bless you, Lord. But a lot of times we're the only Bible that people ever read. And if we're not right, we'll argue the King James Bible is the Word of God, and I'll stand right there with you all night long. But if we don't read it or apply it to our life and we're not Bless living you, it, does it really matter what version you carry? That's right. Bless Bless you, it's all that Christ wanted was her testimony. Yeah. About what he had done in her life. She fell on his face, worshipped him, and told him all the truth. Yeah. It wasn't hid anyway. Right. You can hide things from me, and I, I don't really care. Mr. Pat Cox over at Kim Water, he used to tell you radar all the time. She said, Hey, if you're by God, you're by me. I thought, Man, that's not very nice. I'm just Kim. But the, that's the reality. Hey, if you're by him, don't worry about getting by me. But the thing is, you don't get by him. Right. She told him all Where the truth. Lord. Told him what he'd done. What a difference Christ has made. Yes. A lot of times we need to remember where we were. Yes. We need to remember what we were. We need to remember the time that we got a hold of God and the eternal, everlasting difference that He made. We need to tell yes. somebody that. I wonder a lot of times why the things have come in my life that, that, that God's let me face and go through. And I deserve far worse, don't get me wrong. But you wouldn't believe how many people that I've talked to that's going through things that I've been through. Yes. The child that we didn't lose, it's in heaven. I know exactly what it's at. You wouldn't believe how many women have lost children per se. Yeah. They've got to come to my wife. My wife's got to talk to them about how God brought her through. People don't know God or know anything about God. Thank you, Lord. Got to say his grace, his mercy, his long suffering, his peace, his joy, his victory. It's all him. Just a testimony. Yeah. And I'm glad that that old story of God's grace and glory still yeah. works today, aren't Amen. you? Amen. Verse number 34, watch this in closing. Jesus is finally going to speak. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Yes. Go in peace, and be whole thy plague. Yes. We see the results of her faith, even in the midst of her struggles. It brought peace. Preacher, how am I going to get through what I'm facing just by trusting God? Jesus. Yes. He's able to give a peace that passes all understanding when your world, when your life's turned upside down, when everything's falling apart, if you just trust God, he can give peace. Right. I think about David. I love David. A man after God's own heart, even after he failed and everything else, his son and all of his former friends has got him surrounded in the wilderness, screaming and yelling, we're going to kill you. And he said, and he still had peace. He said, thou art the uplifter of my head, thou art my glory, you're my high and mighty tower, you're my buckler, you're my shield, you're all the... He just started thinking about who God was. And what God was. And he said, boy, I can trust him. I can trust him. Job says, though he slay me, I will trust him. Amen. I'm glad no matter what we're facing or going through, we can trust God and we can get a hold of Him right in the middle Amen. of it. Amen. We see we see that He give her peace. 
Somebody that hadn't had peace for 12 well, long years has been in bondage for 12 years. She's got peace, and now she's Pretty got freedom. Boy. So that you can go, the plate's gone. Pretty Those boy. chains have been broken. She's well, finally been made free. Well, now she's whole and able to go. I began to think about how many times our burdens have put us in bondage and have destroyed our faith. Things that we wrestle with. So we're not wrestling that with flesh and blood. Those people we look at tonight, we say, boy, they're our enemy. No, they're not. They're fathery. Yes. They're spirity. Yes. Pretty good, brother. Jesus, though everybody in reality was his enemy for the mm -hmm. most part when he came, he, he wasn't the enemy of no man. He, he loved all men. He is right. And he's told us to love just the same. Mm -hmm. But preacher, it hurt. Sure it does. I bet Calvary hurt too. <laughs> but it made a difference. Yes. Love is what makes the difference. Yeah. God is love. It's Pretty one thing more. to say love. It's another thing to show love. Yeah. The preacher had heard, yeah, that's where long suffering comes in. I'm glad he's long suffering toward us, but not well that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. I wonder how many times I broke his heart. I wonder how many times that, that I've brought that I've crucified him with flesh. I wonder how many times I've done all those things. Yeah. But you know how many times though I've failed him, he's never failed me. Right. Well, I might, I've turned away from him, he's never That's turned away more. from me. We serve a wonderful Savior. Amen. Our situations and circumstances doesn't change the goodness of our God. That's right. They just make him better. That's right. Preach you, Lord. But I'm glad when all else fails, Preach you, Lord. if we can just get a hold of God, we can find peace. We can find joy. Well, we can find victory. Well, I wonder how long it takes us to, to get a hold of God. It took her 12 years. Well, that's just silly. Isn't it? That's what that's what my mind says. Mm -hmm. But then I think about the children of Israel. They had a 12 days journey from where they were to Canaan. It took them 40 years and most of them died in the wilderness. That's right. I wonder how many of us will die off in the wilderness before we ever get to the sweet place that God's got for us. Because we're not going to get up and get a hold of God. We're worried about this giant. We're worried about that mountain. We're worried about what that one says. 